Hey. Okay, come on. Hey, thanks for clicking on the video or possibly catching the live. This is Kai and Y007. And this is a chocolate Sunday. It's Sunday. It's chocolatey. This one here is Sex Addicts Anonymous Among Us. <laughs> the title came out a little funny, but um, basically going to have a chat about like what exactly is sex addiction, um, some of the effects of it, uh, things like that, and multitasking. Um, be interested to know some of your thoughts on it too. And... Um, there's like, you know, a, a stigma built around it too. Or even if you're not maybe an addict, but you may feel a little bit of a hyper sexual active type of person or whatever. Um, there's some decent information. So I want to talk about it, but keep it on a lighter note. Um, things aren't always, you know, real bad or anything, but with anything in life, I think, you know, you just want to find balance. Sex is natural um, and the healthier it is, you know, the better it can be. So I just wanted to get in and talk about some of that. Um, this is a viewer discretion. It's 18 and older. And pretty much that's what I would expect to be in here. Okay. Um, hope everyone is doing well. What's going on with y'all? What's up to the good and the naughty people? <laughs> And as always, I appreciate y'all for joining me. And we're going to we'll get right into it. Speaking of chocolate. Okay, so we'll just get right into it. Here we go. So I'm going to go over, um, uh, what we talking about some sex addiction and make some points. I got a little video footage to add in there. Um, and I have a little fun with y'all with this. Hopefully, y'all enjoy. And if this isn't for you, I understand it. You know, nobody's forced to do really or watch or pretty much do anything. Okay. So we're gonna get right into this. It's interesting too that um. I had a little comment. Um, am I a freak? I think that's kind of a strange question. Um, I'm a person that wants to provide some information and um, like not be called names about it, not be shamed about it and things like that. And that's part of what I would like to encourage with other people. Um, Cause see, sometimes it's stuff like this, comments like that. <laughs> um, being left um, that hinders people from even like having a conversation. We all engage in it and may have different tendencies. I may not agree with your tendency. You know, there's different things that have, you know, how people feel, you know? Like I might not think that you should go off to a, to another country just to be having sex with someone else or possibly someone out of your group just to do it and be unprotected, stuff like that, that you might be into. But I think that, you know, you just got to kind of think things out a little more. And that's why it's good to have these conversations. 
moving right along. So sex, pornography, um, different things like that um, fall into the categorization of um, sex. Or if you um, kind of not have a balance with it, then um, it's looked at as possibly an addiction. And that can be with many things in life. Um, I kind of question whether sex can really be a, a true addiction. In some ways, I kind of see where they're coming from. Um, but I'm going to read more into it, too. And everyone is different. You know, if you cheat on somebody, that doesn't mean like you're just automatically a sex addict or you get to use that or certain things like that. Um, but it, it has been um, it has been written as a mental um, disorder. We're going to get right into it. And I've talked before about like porn, stuff like that. Um, and it's like I watch myself. And there's one guy on here, I don't know, he's, he's just funny. I don't know if y'all know him, but he's called Gibby the Clown. I'm going to show a little bit of that. I think I showed him before in the past. But it's just funny porn, I think it's, it's funny. <laughs> I don't know, it's different. You know, sometimes I look at things because of the uniqueness about it, or, you know, maybe it, you know, it make you laugh. Or, But I'm trying to, like, loosen the mood a bit, too, talking about the topic and um, give examples. But I want to, you know somewhat have some, you know, kind of have some fun with it as well as providing the information for you. And I know some topics aren't as easy. So um, the only thing that makes it easier for me is because I've been dealing with it most of my life. I've been um, like read up on things. Um, early on, I learned about sex, but I should have been able to receive the information. Um, as you're growing up, it depends on who you get the information from if you get information. And it kind of sucks because what I've done, and I know a lot of people do, is you go out and find out for yourself when somebody could have just had conversations with you at a young age, you know, or into your adulthood. And um, I didn't really have much of that. But what I did, um, I listened to doctors like Dr. Um, Ruth and another woman, um, Dr. Um, Sue Johansson. And they gave so much good information about sex. Like you could just call and you can just do like any kind of question, like whatever question you have, you could um, you could give it to them. Not give it to them, but um, ask it. So I don't know, I found it really interesting. I've always been intrigued by um, like having a healthy sex life and just what is it? Like, what's this, what's that? So I'm just a curious person, I still am. And I think that's what helps me with what I do, because when you're curious, you seek more knowledge. If you're questioning things, I don't just want to question. I want to find out the answer. So, you know, I don't know, that's how it is. Anyway, we got Gabby the Clown coming up. Um, going to have a little explicitness going on, like I said, for your discretion. Uh, but no, like, absolute, you know, nudity, like you may see on some other areas, not here. All right, let's get into it. Have someone in here, welcome. Now you see, he's supposed to be playing ball. He supposed to be playing ball or something. He doing something else in his mouth. <laughs> oh, not calling him an addict, but part of an addiction is when it gets in the way of other things, they say. You might need to do, do other things, work, other important things, but becoming too preoccupied with sex, they say that's a sex addiction or possibly, possibly. So I'm gonna let the rest of this go. So I want to make it clear too, and I'll say it at the end, sex is a very natural part of human nature, not only for procreation, but also for pleasure and intimacy. However, a minority of people, sex alters, for a minority of people, sex alters the brain's chemistry and takes away the control element around engagement levels. So that's what it seems to be mostly about is control. We all know about sex. Um, it's a part of most of our lives, whether you engage in it or not, it's around, right? So it's an imbalance and that's where they get the part from where you may possibly, um, could use some help support with it. And then we're going to get into hypersexuality. Pause that. I like how I did this because it's like in a negative image, uh, 
like for photography, they call them negatives. Uh, anyway, I just need to check on something else real quick. What happened to the, um, so here we go with that. Let me write this number, this number down, because I think I'll put the call in number in there. So if anyone wants to use the line to call or something, so, did I do it right? Okay. Eight, nine, six. Okay. That should be the correct number, and I'll put it in the chat. All right, so hypersexuality, um, we got compulsive sexual behavior. It's sometimes called hypersexuality disorder or sexual addiction. So we have types of activities to your left, masturbation, pornography, cyber sex. I had to think about it because I was like, what is that? Um, I'm just <laughs> really use that term, but, I, you know, when you're video or you're, you know, pleasuring each other or watching the other person, you know, do things and you watch, <clears throat> excuse me, phone sex, strip clubs. But a lot of people do go to strip clubs. They probably don't look at that as a hypersexuality, but it is. Uh, cheating on a partner. We'll go to the other side. Um, okay, my bad. Well, types of activities like masturbation, which I said. Then on the other side is compulsive masturbation. Uh, compulsive sexual behavior. So it's kind of out of control. It's just you want to get it. You got to get it. Go, 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 go. Erotomania, um, problematic hypersexuality, sexual compulsivity, sexual dependency. And with any word that I'm not familiar with, I always look up. So it's kind of funny that I, 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 I don't know, I didn't even I didn't catch that word right there, but erotomania. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, so, yep, those are some of the things here. I'm actually going to. Look it up right now because I want to know what it is. In the meantime, I hope everyone is doing well. Okay. Erotomania. Erotomania. Also known as the Clarenbolt's syndrome is a psychiatric syndrome characterized by the delusional belief that one is loved by another person of generally of a higher social status. What does that have to do with? Okay, well, that's in part of uh, this hypersexuality thing. Okay. So we got the bipolar disorders that can include hypersexuality as a symptom. And you look to the right, borderline personality disorder, include hypersexuality behavior as a symptom as well. When sex becomes a problem, it develops into an addiction. And there's signs that you can look for um, being a sexual addict means and the treatment options that are available. And by the way, I'm going to show two articles. This is one. This article that you're looking at right now is from a place based out of the UK. And they're called the Delamere. And they're open 24 hours. On each article will be some information, too, if you'd like to reach out for more information or possibly for help or support. And I will have it in the description box as well. This live is through... Um, is through... I say through StreamYard, and with that, um, actually, that's still I still could put in anyway. It'll be in the description, okay? So it will, it'll be in there. Um, uh, let me put the number in the chat for a second. I don't know if I did this while the thing was going. So, like they said, too, they help, and um, there's there's help with um, many many well, all pretty much all disorders. And it's confidential. Even as I see, there's a number there too. So again, sex addiction is a recognized mental health disorder whereby the sufferer compulsively engages in sexual activity. And the word recognized is supposed to be spelled R-E-C-O-G-N-I-Z-E-D, according to the um what I, did I do the Webster? Yeah, Webster the dictionary. So it looks like they misspelled it here. I always have to bring it up because I, I don't like misspelling stuff. 
So um, instead of using sex to build healthy intimacy, a sex addict will often use sex as a way of coping with stress. But listen to this. The irony of it is that sex then becomes a primary cause of stress leading to a very vicious, hard cycle to break. Not only that, it, it um, can cause stresses. So what the person is trying to avoid or like escape from, this could end up um, possibly making it worse. Or adding on, you know, to the stress that that person may um, already have. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, moving forward. Oh, my bad. We already did that. Okay. Let's go back just a bit here. So this is, like I said, it's recognized as a mental disorder. And again, I want to mention too, some things can be temporary. You can overcome anything if you feel that it is a problem. If not, you may just be having a good time. Enjoy yourself. I'm just reading um, some information and I just want to share it and have something a little different to talk about. You'd be surprised who goes through things that you may know, or it could be someone watching this. So, okay. So like I said, so it says right here, the DSM, which is the um, di what's, uh, diagnostic, I don't know you have it in front of me, but I know it's a mental health disorder. It's the DSM uh, manual recognizes following eight paraphilias, that's paraphilias, although there are many more, exhibitionism, voyeurism, pedophilia, sexual, misogynism, sexual, sadism, sadism, transvestic fetishism, fetishism, and fraturism. I think some of this is in the language. The overriding of elements. What is sex addiction and illness? So the definition we went over, these are some resources to where you got the information from. Pathological relationship with the mood altering experience. Um, and sex addiction is not about sex. It is about an individual's obsessive compulsive relationship with sex. Because it is good to have a healthy sex drive. Some people don't have a sex drive at all, really. And some people have a low one. We all have different levels of them. So this is just showing an imbalance where it's just really have, can take over your life. Sex addict is often filled with overwhelming feelings of remorse, loss, guilt. I got my um, brand was in the way of the other lettering. <laughs> loss of control. Um, guilt and shame. So these feelings can be overpowering. Sex addict mental health deteriorates to such extent um, that they see suicide as their only way out. Wow. So that's serious. Um, that's pretty much as serious as it gets. There's a rise of um, suicide that's been going on too. Um, a lot with the children, with adults and things like that, there seems to have been a lot of um, an increase in violence that's been going on and also domestic um, violence going on too. There's a lot of stressors or more stressors going on and ways of coping with them, we all could use help with that. You know, um, that's how I feel about that. And it's interesting they mentioned shame because like I felt like that, like I'll watch some porn and it's just like, I just watch, you know, but I sometimes I feel like somebody watching me watch it. Like, so it's my conscience. It's like, you're, you good, like watching it. And I spoke to somebody about it and it was like, hi, that's the safest way you could be. Like what, you know, you, you, it's okay. And, um, I talked to a man about it. Like, I don't know any women. Like, I, I just don't, I don't know any women that, that, um, you know, that can, that are like into it or maybe watch things or, you know, comfortable about talking about their sex drive, but keeping it real too, you know, not exaggeration so that it's for attention or it's for some other thing. Like, you know, really have an honest conversation. 
So sometimes when I talk with people, like I grew up where I just had a lot of friends and not a lot of friends, but certain friends, I only had like maybe, you know, like a couple real good, like um, females, the rest would be like guys, you know? So um, sometimes who you be around, you kind of might have more tendencies of. And when I talk with them about things, a lot of things are accepted to them, but I always felt like, I don't know how other females would take it. Like, I don't know if they, you know, cause they're more like, ill or I don't got time or, mm, you know, like it just be different, but I can relate to some of the feelings that they're mentioning on here, you know? So, um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, my sex addict symptoms of that. Um, and there's also 24 hour hotlines for suicide and also for sex addiction too. And again, I'll have that in the description. Um, so we're going to finish this up and I have another video of fun with it and then um, get back into another article. Um, if anyone would like to, add on and there's a number there i think there's someone else watching too if you'd like to call in that's fine if you have a question comment or you know anything pertaining to the topic at all feel free or feel free to add on to the chat um i really would like this to be a like non-judging zone you know like i feel like i'm kind of being judged when i came here like with the comment that was left but i was like you know what i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing i don't do this often and that's for a reason and I won't be doing another one for a while. So, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, if it's not for you or you feel some kind of way, you you do not have, you know, it's, it's your choice. That's one good thing about YouTube and the life we live. We have a lot of choices. This isn't easy for me, <laughs> you know, but I want to do it. But at the same time, like I'm sweating out my clothes right now, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But if something's talent pushing me to do something and I feel it's 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 right and you know, other people may value it and get something out of it, then it was worth it. I'm not going to let nobody stop me. I talk about all type of stuff. I can almost pretty much guarantee that something on my channel will be for you. It will be. It will speak directly to you. I want to show you stuff you've never seen before. I want to bring up stuff that you have seen or heard of before. Sometimes, you know, but it's just all about engagement. A lot of people are trapped. You don't really uh, be able to get out and socialize and stuff. So like, this is could be somewhat of a lifeline for some people, possibly like myself, you know. So moving along. Uh obsessive thinking about sex. So persistent and overwhelming thoughts of sex to the extent that sex addict will have difficulty concentrating on anything else. Now I think about sex a lot, I'll be honest. Um, but it doesn't get in the way of things. And I like to be focused. I don't do to to-do lists and stuff because I feel like that's a threat to me. I don't like it. I like to just do it. When I see lists, I feel like that's just too, like, it, make, it makes me feel overwhelmed, kind of like, I got all that stuff to do when I could just be doing it. So you do what works for you, you know, and um, with anything in life is finding balance. Don't let anything get in the way of you needing to make the moves you need to make and things like that. But again, sex can be a wonderful thing. So it's not putting it down if you have a whole lot of sex. It's just wanting to be sure you're not hurting yourself or possibly others but you're using sex as a weapon. So moving along, compulsive to engage in sex. A sex addict's brain compels them to engage in sex, even when there are high probability of negative consequences. The compulsion to engage in sex will cause disruption to other areas of a sex addict's life. Hmm. And that's interesting too. See, on the other hand, I'm very disciplined. Um, so as far as like having to engage now that's different because then that's when you really want to reach out and have a partner. You got to, you know, have a partner or something like that. I've experienced that um, in the past. Um, I felt the need to have a sex partner. Um, I was single a lot. So casual sex seemed to be more on the menu. Um, going out, go out to the clubs things like that. And then it's like, okay, so now what am I going to have sex? Am I going to get that? Like that was important. And in a way like sexual health is important, but I may have been prioritizing that too much and not getting what I should have been getting. Um, as a woman, we ha do have needs um, emotionally and it can occur even if we out here like, oh, I'm just having sex or I just, you know, the there's a piece of you that you done gave up and you left behind. So whether we kind of feel it then or there or not, we're given pieces of ourselves. 
And if you're given too much of pieces, I think it kind of breaks you a little bit inside. So just be aware and want to have control over that. Know what phase you are in your life so that you may not get as hurt or the other person. Um, so, all right. Spending excessive time engaging insects. That means you just can't get enough sometimes and you're um, insatiable. You're not easy to satisfy. I do feel like everyone should be satisfied to an extent when you're having sex. You should have some form of satisfaction out of it. All right. Um, you know, if not, then there, then there, there may be a problem. Continuation despite negative consequences. A sex addict will suffer negative consequences as a result of sexual behavior. Examples, um, they may suffer from being found out of being unfaithful, contracting STD or STI, um, unintentionally falling pregnant. Okay, why do you put pregnant? See, this is, um, is this the UK one? I apologize. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think some of their, that's why they're spelling stuff a little um, incorrectly. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's like they, it says they will not be able to stop even if they want to. That's interesting to me. Like I, I've never really heard it put like that. Not being able to stop a sexual behavior. Hmm. Progression of sexual behavior. Over time, a sex addict will find that they need more sex to satisfy their needs or forms or more risky sex. Um, so you're, you're engaging in more risky sex, so whether it's unprotected um, or maybe who you're engaging with or how you're going about it. What used to satisfy them no longer does suffice. Mm. Most extreme forms of pornography, committing criminal sexual offenses, prostitution, paying for sex and things like that. Hmm. That's interesting. Engaging in sex to the point of feeling pain. A sex addict may masturbate so frequently that it becomes painful or have too much sex. Rough, sadistic sex, um, they suffer physical pain as a result. Yet this will not stop them from engaging excessively in sexual activity. So that's a pretty decent breakdown of sex addicts um, in the different, some of the different forms. A little later in the stream, this will probably be about an hour stream or, or somewhere around there. So we just hit the half hour mark just now. Um, there'll be another article and that article coming up will be more of the female um, tendencies in um, coping with sex addiction. Cause I know, and I don't know about you, but when you think of sex addicts, you picture men and um, that's mostly what we've been shown. But women um, have uh, sexual addictions as well. It's a smaller percentage, and it might be quite a bit of a smaller percentage, but there is this um, females as well as males. And there are similarities in um, the sexual addiction. There's just um, some differences in what brought out the sexual addiction, what, what they're really going for in it. That's the sexual addictions cycle, acting out inappropriate sexual behavior, guilt, shame, and depression. And see, then depression, if it gets too bad, that's when people tend to get suicidal and things like that. Um, recommitment in healthy action steps. And it says fantasizing distorted thinking. A sex addiction progresses the recommitment of and healthy action steps become less and less. So does sex addiction mean I have to abstain from sex? This is a question that will never, oh, excuse me, that will enter every sex addict's mind. Naturally giving up sex can be a terrifying prospect. However, a sex addict undergoes a full bespoke rehabilitation program. They will not need to give up sex completely, just certain types that relate to their addiction. That's good to know. Sex addicts avoid intimacy. So I'm gonna skip around just a bit because I'm gonna like kind of narrow it down. Um, unlike drug or alcohol addiction, where drugs and alcohol need to be abstained completely. Okay. 
I think that it helps to to like abstain from sex too. Um, I'll get into that a little further down and I get a little more comfortable and I'll, you know, talk more into my own lifestyle a little bit. That okay. Um treatment for sex addiction. And that's why I mentioned here this it's Delamere. This, this is in the UK. We do have American ones too that I had um I have information on as well. This is like it's one of their treatment rooms. And again, I changed the like the print of everything, so it looks like it's in a um, negative image, illumination. So they're the UK's only purpose-built addiction treatment and behavioral center. There's also a phone number, you know. There's numbers for this, and, everything. and there's a list of things that they also treat there. I moved myself. All right. So, like we said, addicts, it could, sex addiction it gets in the way. You might have to do something else. You got something going on, but you just have to, you just trying to make time for the sex or whatever. So, I'm going to get into some other thing here. <laughs> now, see, they're supposed to be shopping. They're supposed to be shopping. <laughs> And I recognize the store. I'm like, this is one of them family dollar stores. They have good prices and all that. But I haven't been to a family dollar in so long. There's places I just don't even go anymore. Like, I, I really just don't. <laughs> Something just be like, nah. And it's, it'd be the customer service, too, at places. Not just that. But, hey, some people want to record themselves in the middle of the aisle. Open ass in aisle seven. Open ass in aisle seven. Dutty R7. Dutty Dutty. And we'll move right along here. So if you notice, they say five lies female sex addicts tell themselves. It's like, okay. I feel like I keep hearing like females lying, females lying while I'm reading stuff. Um, so like I said, um, it does affect females as well. We kind of grow up just thinking everything is on men and it's a male thing, but it's not. It is more dominated with males and males usually have a higher sex drive, which could cause that. Males have erections throughout the day, which could um, make them more prone to certain things as well. Um, on average, from what I'm from my readings in the past, men average around 11 erections a day, which seems like a lot, you know, and it, and it happens too without them realizing, you know, they're not intentionally and sometimes it'll just happen. So, so there's many reasons why it's hard to accept um, the behavior as a female. Sex addiction is something that happens to men, but it's like I said, both men and women and a third of regular visitors to online porn sites are female. And it says the number is likely to increase. Bottom line, you are hardly the only woman battling a sex addiction. Whatever you're battling out there too, you, you're not the only one. It would be hard to believe you will be the only one. There's something wrong with me. So it says the truth. Blaming yourself is a common response, but the reality isn't about some fundamental fault failing on your part. Many factors play into addiction and sex addiction for women is especially complicated given longstanding stigmas about women and sex. We're looked at different with our sexuality. You know, it's like there's different expectations that are put on females, usually for the most part. I'm totally alone. No, you're not alone, both in your struggles and your journeys towards recovery. And connect with your community, connect with the support, um, the supportive community of um, addiction. Deep down, I must just be a blank. Social stigma and double standards for male and female sexually are deeply embedded in our psyches, can emerge in the ugly forms when you're struggling with sexual behavior disorder. The key thing is to remember that sex is a, and desire can be positive parts of life and that professional help can reconnect you with the healthy attitude towards sex. That's what we want. This is hopeless. Um, never going to overcome it. You can absolutely overcome
an addiction, but it is likely that you need some help outside. The science of addiction shows that essentially rewires the brain, which explains the difficulty in breaking the cycle alone and underscores why it is exact, excuse me, extremely helpful to have support of an addiction uh, specialist. Just testing my sounds. I'm straight. We good. So um, that's interesting too. Like you don't think women are going through what they do. We're looked at differently too. So like they said, there's just a different stigma with women and women probably coming out about it or even realizing that it could happen. You know, it's not just for men or about men that um, have this action. All right. So. That's um, the takeaway for that. And there's just a little further of the article coming in. And then we're going to get into a little skit, a little kind of porn skit coming up, where I show a woman and she's saying, you know, I'm in need. I want some, you know, she might be going far with it, but, you know, I just figure, you know, let's just add some familiarity. Let's add some uniqueness to it. Let's, you know, let's just get into it. So the reality of sex addiction for women broadly occurs when you're no longer able to manage the sexual behavior and results of the lack of control that affects your work, personal relationships, or daily activities. Commonly dismissed, many have an addiction, but thought that only men struggle with it. So that just reiterates what I just mentioned there. You know, so don't feel ashamed or alone or marginalized. Marginalized, you know, feeling small, unimportant. Female addiction seems to manifest somewhat differently than it does with men, with root causes of addiction stemming from a need for power, control, or attention. I can't stress that enough, females and attention and their, um, their desire, their needs for attention. The results in women being more likely to experience sex addiction through fantasy sex, hmm, seductive role sex, trading sex, or pain exchange. Compulsive sexual behavior can also act as a form of escape from emotional pain or stress. And a lot of people use that and it does de-stress you and it helps with things, but it depends on what it is. Are you still dealing with it? Are you going to cope and work through that stress? Or are you gonna keep depending on sex for it? Because again, that could be temporary relief. Signs of a sex addiction, very similar. So it's repetitive, compulsive, having feelings. The last one was really interesting to me too. So like we said, continued sexual behavior with negative consequences and you don't even give a what. A pattern of trying um, and failing to um, control this negative sexual behavior. Feelings such as guilt, shame, detachment around sex. Having a feeling of falling in love with almost any partner. Again, having a feeling of falling in love with almost any partner. That's interesting. So, um, you know, there's there's a disconnect. There's something not right. And that's why the, the rehabilitation things kind of helps you get rewired back so we can, you know, get your sexy back. Get your <laughs> sexy back, yes. Greetings, anyone that's come through. And there's a number in the chat. Or feel free to leave a chat. No judgment. What causes a sex addiction? So it's different things. It could be tr uh, emotional trauma, um, adverse childhood experience, mental health conditions. This is why professional support is so important in helping address addiction and securing a healthier relationship with sex. Because the thing is, if there's something else that is causing you to feel a certain kind of way, but it's from your past, it's like, let's deal with it. Whatever it is, you want to move that out the way. Is it a hindrance for you? Is it is it is something maybe you thought was gone, but it's in the way. It's in the way of you having a more successful health life. Don't let nothing get in the way of that. All right. Common factors playing a role. Now, see, as you see, there was a box that popped up to the right, which was cool because these are experts popping up. They see me online. And then, they'll, well, they, they know someone's on the website. They pop up. The phone number is at the bottom. And then there's information you put in to reach out and send a request. Because a lot of times people have an addiction and they're coming on looking it up for whatever reason. Um, 
So they want you to know the help is there and they're almost making it so convenient for you. Like here, go ahead and just enter your information, you know, and take it, you know, take it a day at a time. Um, so yeah, that, and there's a suicide line, um, suicide website. Oh, and domestic violence website too. And they'll have pop-ups. Cause that was when I did my domestic doozies um, when I was looking into domestic violence, things like that for research. And I clicked on a couple times and it said, do you need help? Click this. And it was like a 911 thing and everything. So be careful when you go on some of these sites because they're ready to help. You may not need it. <laughs> so you don't want to click something and you might end up, you might think you, you know, you got an emergency going on. It's like, you know, I'm just trying to get some data. <laughs> But um, it's a good thing because I, I know there are a lot of people that could use the help. Right? Yeah. What causes sex addiction? We just did that. Moods, stress, depression, loneliness. When I think of sex addiction, too, I picture a partner being there. Maybe you sexing them out. <laughs> but um, it's interesting that loneliness can bring it on, too. So um, that you're already kind of isolated. You may feel detached. You may feel the need for intimacy, but you're thinking right to sex, something like that. Um, that's how I've been somewhat wired to um, maybe not thinking of the right ways to have a good feeling, um, not used to having a healthy relationship. So you've accepted it and you're just like, hey, you know, it is what it is until when it's like, no, you do have more control over that. You do. Um History of abuse, uh, including physical, sexual, or emotional. You know, so, um, yeah, overcoming sex addiction at the dawn, right? This article here went into um, the dawn. Now, the dawn is a place, um, a rehab place that is Asian. It's an Asian hol holistic rehab. Excuse me. Okay. six-week program. So they get into the um, information about what type of programs they have and all that stuff. And that's entirely, like I said, I'll have information to um, in the description. So it won't just be international. Of course, it'll be um, for the United States to America. So you have the information for here. So let's get into a little skit here. Mm, women in need. You know, I've been thinking about these big girls with big tits, you know, I like that type yeah. of big girls. How about you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah, that sounds good. All of it. Yeah. That sounds nice. Definitely. She was bad. Yeah, yeah, something really big, you know. That's a lot, huh? <laughs> Let's get a little more music. Found the Copyright Act of 1976 for fair use for education and entertainment purposes. Because I'm hard to try. Sure. 
Come up to China. New experience. Yeah. yeah. Dreams to reality. Hey, maybe you like to wear shades and have a bite of some dark meat. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey. So I was just doing a little thing there. Um, because we're talking about females and kind of having your desires and things like that. And you know, so I just wanted to just throw a little bit of that in there. Um also, it was interesting, if you recognize this woman here, she, um, this is Jennifer Lewis, and she revealed her struggle with bipolar disorder and sex addiction. Um, I had heard them speak on um, some of the mental disorders she has battling. I didn't realize that she had a sex addiction. To be honest, I never heard, excuse me, I must be nervous. It's, Burping making nerve. Oh, goodness, sorry. Um, I didn't realize that. I guess see how you're not used to seeing people that look like you talk about things. You're always used to seeing other people again, men. And when it comes to people of color, I don't really see them having a um like a real conversation about it as much. Maybe we were shunned away from it, kept away from it. And in America, we have a different standard of beauty. What's sexy? what should turn you on, what can makes you impulsive, things like that, when black people are awesome looking people, you know what I'm saying? So, but we haven't really been shown that and I've never really seen us in a sexual light. When I have, if you look now, you know, I'm not that blind, I could see it, but now we're like over-sexualized in other ways, but it's not in a positive. It's not like, oh, look at her. I would like to take her home and make her mine, or not just to have sex with, but make her my woman. Wow, you look good and you're smart. Man, you're sexy. Oh, you look like you smell good. Oh, you, you know, things that you may think in a woman that you would want to have just for yourself, not just for the night. Um, so um, I looked into um, information on her. She has a memoir that she wrote some years back. This was in 2017, and it was discussed in the name of her book, and I'll show that too. Um, it's called The Mother of Black Hollywood. So she opens up about her battle with her bipolar disorder and um, sexual addiction and alcoholism. So she did have say alcohol played a role as well. So I just wanted to get into um, some information on um, what she had shared with that. Now, she started off in Broadway. And she said it was a rush, like you get a rush from the crowd. You know, it's a thrill. And I've heard other celebrities talk about this recently. They feel so good after it becomes a downer. It becomes more regular. Um, it becomes, you don't hear the yelling. You don't, you don't get that feeling that they feel when they're on stage performing. And it affects them. And it's been affecting a lot of celebrities. You And we see it as, oh, you, you got it going on. Like, what you worried about? Like, you should be fine. Or are you on too much? There's something though um, emotionally that they've gone through and it, it has affected their mental on some of them. They said there's just some takeaway once it's over and they can't wait to get back and you know do it again so they perform again. But again, once it's over, they feel a withdrawal somewhat, like a, a withdrawal of the thrill. And sometimes they go and look for it someplace else. They say they wanna keep that thrill going. It feels so good. So what she said she did was, um, and this is quote, it was a rush. Once it's over, she looked to, I looked between the sheets for more. So once that was over, she needed that thrill again. So she would go out and just get sexed. She wants sex. Quote, it wasn't really about sex or alcohol. It was unresolved psychological problems. Sex was simply my painkiller, quote unquote. I've said this before too, sex is a weapon and sex, sex can really be a weapon. Sex can be a weapon. And we look at it as being fun, funny, things like that, but it's not when it takes a negative toll on you. Anything that can take a negative toll on you it affects you and it can affect people around you. So it's good to just recognize why we're doing what we're doing, um, things like that. So I'm glad she got the help. She's a really good actress. She's funny. She's so spunky. Um, 
I'm glad she's with us. <laughs> okay. And it's a great show. It just did their last season too of Blackish. One of my favorite shows, man. Favorite people too. I mean, Anthony Anderson's on there. He's one of my favorite guys. Um, and Tracy Ellis Ross is one of my favorite people. I'm not just saying that they are. I have a magazine from like 2010, I think, at least. And I was just like, maybe one day I, I'm gonna meet her and she could sign it. So old. <laughs> um okay. So a little more going on here. I don't know if you saw Gibby getting all that head on the basketball court. He's supposed to be playing the game. Did that warm y'all up though? Did it get y'all warm inside? <laughs> uh okay, so where are we at? Also control chocolate. Um if you're having a little loneliness going on, you may be just about to go to bed. I ain't trying to make you have cavities, so brush your teeth after too. Be like me. But chocolate has a, a it hits your pleasure senses. When you see people eat chocolate and we go, mm, and it, it just it tastes really good, it's good on the inside. There is scientific data that backs up the fact that when you eat chocolate, it hits the pleasure senses of the brain. So enjoy your chocolate. And I actually like to have it at night. It kind of tucks you in at night. <laughs> does and you work for me um so yeah so just close like just summing some of this up now recognizing as a mental disorder you can get in the way of things um shopping eating um your social uh social media attention seeking thrills by popularity things like that too you people that do content and you're growing popularity you're popular or not you're getting a thrill um, people that come in chat rooms don't have a channel, half know who they are. They're excited just having conversation in the chat. These are things that level your um, your pleasure area a little bit different. So people are seeking that. Addicts use sex when stressed out. We went over that too. And like um, it could lead to more stress. So want to be careful with that. Um, and the overwhelmingness of shame and things like that. So I just, I honestly um, hope that, uh, you know, if people need help, you, you get the help that you need, but know that you're not alone and don't be ashamed. Don't be too hard on yourself about things. There's enough going on in the world to be harder on about. So, um, you know, it seems like, you know, just, just it, the help is out there. And I just wouldn't want nobody like to know that people are suffering too if, we know that we can help, but we can help each other in some kind of way, you know? Okay. It's be annoying when I be looking for my little playlist that's supposed to already been already and set and then something goofy will happen. It don't even make sense. Girl. And, um... Have any questions or comments again or anyone sees the video now or sees it later anything you'd like to add or if you have a suggestion too about something discussed or something you'd like to see discussed or elaborated on more um let me know Let's have a little second. As always, appreciate coming through. Could have been anywhere, but you're here with me. All right. Um, <clears throat> so like I mentioned too, the articles I used are from rehabilitation places. The information will be in the description too. Um, if you just want to maybe read up on some more stuff or if you yourself or being know someone that could just use some support, use some help with something they're overcoming and it's affecting in the sex life or anything else emotionally that you want to help. And then I'll show the book that she wrote. Just Miss uh, Jennifer Lewis. She's been around a very long time. So
something else I was trying to do, but that didn't uh, do it. Just testing the line. Oh, I didn't press it. Okay. So how y'all doing out there? Hope y'all doing good. All right. I just want to make sure. All right. And sometimes people are kind of quiet about this, and that's okay. You know, sometimes people come in, they go, or they stick around. But if you would like to, like I said, the number is there, too. You want to talk about anything or touch anything I said? Is there anything that's not clear? You agree, disagree with anything? And if you want to be quiet and chill, it's cool. All right. Um, so I said, I went over to a couple of articles and showed a couple of things going on. They're pretty good. I figured it'd be about 45 minutes, probably an hour or so. If I'm alone on here. Okay. Um, so again, we just want to um, offer help. Lots going on, a lot of destruction, but you should be able to enjoy yourself, enjoy your body and possibly another body or bodies, um, you know, um, but just, you know, having a healthy sex life. And um, I just feel like what I asked in the, the description box, I asked like, why are we so um, uh, withdrawn when it comes to certain topics and stuff, but yet we want to engage so much. You know, we want to do this and do that, but when it comes time to just have a conversation, that's that's the hardest thing to do. But it's easier to throw your body and slap it around on somebody else and then possibly pay prices later. So I don't know. Like I, I guess kind of dumbfounded. To me. Hopefully I provided some information that may be of some use and maybe you thought some of the stuff in here was all right. And as always, I appreciate you watching, coming through on a chocolate sundae. You like chocolate? Chocolate is a bit of aphrodisiac too, you know. Bite a chocolate person, you might get it too. <laughs> The world, they are what is that? Yeah, jam this shit. Where you been, baby? Right here. Dark skin. Yeah. Like a light skin. Caramel, All right, so as always, appreciate you coming through, watching the video. We having some more um, things to come. I said, um, once in a blue, I have the chocolate Sundays. That's where we talk about sex. If you come on my channel, I will have a folder called Sex Talk About It. And all the videos that have to do with sex will be right in there. The ones I've done previously over the past year and this one and ones to come. I have some coming up. It'll probably be on a wet Wednesday. So the other days that I'll do it is on a Wednesday. I like to do wet Wednesday. Um, we'll talk about some different things coming up. Um, ghetto gaggers. That's a big one. Um, I've been uh, quite disappointed with what I've seen on that channel. You might be like, how could you be for, you know, more disappointed? But I'm seeing things that are starting to look like a, like a, like a damn crime. <laughs> But some of them, you, you probably don't even think you know what I'm talking about, is, but it goes a little further. But I'll, I'll bring that up then. You know, it just has to do with like, um, you know, pregnancy and things like that. It's just what, you know, what, what you should kind of be, a, you know, able to do at least while you're carrying a baby. You know, at least, at least while you got another human being in the womb, you know. Because like I said, you know, porn is fine, you know, but it's it's all about what you do. And in part of this, they even mentioned extreme porn. Now, that's an extreme channel. There are some extremities in pornography that I've noticed, too. And it started to disrupt my entertainment. Because some things I'm curious. I'm like, oh, y'all doing that? Oh, well, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Y'all the ones doing it, not me. That's how I'll be thinking sometimes. <laughs> but it's, some of it's coming to a point where, you know, like y'all affecting our some of our enjoyability. 
And um, I see that some men feel the same way because I do read comments and I see what some of the people are saying in there and some of it may be going too far, you know, things like that. And some of that from my readings falls into the addiction where you're you're pushed to possibly more extreme viewing, more extreme sex. And do you want to be hurt? Do you want pain? And, you know, those things. And we have to rationalize what is more normal, what's not. And we're pushed to be abnormal when it comes to some things so that you can stand out the most or you think you're this and that. But, you know, there's different type of sexual fetishes and things like that, depending on the person or different type of things that you like. But it depends on the person. But, you know, like I say, you know, stay in tune with yourself. You are a energy and we share energies with other people because we all have an energy inside of us and we share in energies um, often. All right. So hopefully you enjoy the way I'm sharing mine. All right. And as always, thanks for coming out. And whoever's listening, things now. All right. And as always, thank you. Peace. Peace and blessings to y'all. I like DIY I like I like DIY, in one, double seven. I like DIY, in one, double seven. Mm. I like DIY, in one, double seven.